Hello everyone, today I will be discussing about the concluding part of adenomyosis. In my first lecture, I talked about adenomyosis features, the pathology, the pathogenesis and the clinical features, how the patient presents to you, what are the history taking points. Today I will conclude it with the management that means the investigations part and the treatment part. Investigations, mainly in our uh, gynecological things ultrasound is always the investigation of choice. It is always the first investigation to be done and is generally conclusive. But if the ultrasound proves to be inconclusive then MRI can always be done. Ultrasound, it could be 3D, 3D ultrasounds are more informative and color Doppler as well. What are the features? Today I will be focusing upon the features that what an adenomyosis shows. That is why I focus too much on the pathogenesis of the disease. As we know that what is adenomyosis? The endometrium thing moves inside and gets settled inside the myometrium. This was adenomyosis. It could be diffuse, it could be focal. I hope all of you remember. So, the myometrium is very very pathognomic and specific in cases of adenomyosis. So, the sub endometrial layer of the myometrium is very very pathognomic. So, if we see the whole of the myometrium in general we can divide it into three layers, the outer layer, the middle layer and the inner layer. The inner layer is the sub endometrial layer which is very hypoechoic or translucent. So, in general cases where there is no adenomyosis, you will find a clean cut translucent layer beneath the endometrium. But in cases of adenomyosis, since we find that the endometrial things are moving inside, so there is haze in this sub endometrial layer. So, myometrium normally has three distinct zones of different ecogenicity. The inner layer that is this sub endometrial layer is hypoechoic relative to the middle and the outer layer. This subendometrial hypoechoic zone is characteristic in adenomyosis which shows haze that is it is not hypoechoic throughout. So, this is very very pathognomic of adenomyosis in cases of sonographies. I will be showing you some plates also. Heterogeneous ecogenicity what does that mean that is the ecogenicity is not smooth somewhere you will find it is heterogenic, hyperechoic, somewhere it is hypoechoic. Hypoechoic myometrium with multiple small cysts in the myometrium or honeycomb appearance is also very very specific sign of adenomyosis. What does that mean? This means that the myometrium will show cyst, small small cyst over here, over there, everywhere if it is a diffuse thing. So, it gives a honeycomb appearance, right? Increased vascularity within the myometrium and ill defined endometrial echo. In total, the endometrial echo moves inside the myometrium and you will find myometrium with diffuse cyst. The vascularity is different. So, in general, you will have to focus on the myometrium if you want to diagnose adenomyosis on a sonography report. Now, this is a film. In general, you people are getting these films in your exams and the diagnosis is asked or the management is asked. I have already discussed leomyomas and endometrial polyp. Now, this is a transvaginal sonography where you can see this is the uterus, this is the lining of the uterus, right? And this endometrium is the hair. So, you can see the anterior myometrium is somewhat narrower as compared to the posterior myometrium and it is diffusely hypoechoic, heteroechoic. So, this is pathognomic of adenomyosis that the posterior myometrium is increased in size posterior enhancement sign. Now, this you can see that this is the endometrium, the typical triple line appearance of the endometrium and these are small small cyst inside the myometrium. These myometrial cysts are a very very important sign of adenomyosis. This is again a case of adenomyosis. Now, see what does that show? Always if you are looking at a sonography report, always try to locate the probe and then the anterior wall and the posterior wall of the uterus. I have explained it so many times in my previous lectures also. So, once you have delineated your uterus, 
then look for such line thing inside. This line is always the endometrium, the middle part of the endometrium. So, here this is the endometrium, this is the anterior myometrium, this is the posterior myometrium and then you can see so many bands, fan shaped bands, right? Hypoechoic bands rising like this. This is called as Venetian blind appearance. It looks somewhat like this inside the posterior myometrium. So, this is also pathognomic of adenomyosis. So, whenever you look at a plate of sonography, any of these signs, posterior enhancement, myometrial cyst or Venetian blind sign, you can actually find any of the sign inside that report and you can label it as adenomyosis. There is something called as MUSA criteria. It may or may not be asked in your examination, but it is easier to remember the signs on, on a sonography report after reading this MUSA criteria, morphological uterus sonographic assessment criteria, right? Need not to learn, need not to take it by heart, but just see, posterior wall is thicker, right? There are small, small myometrial cyst, diffuse. There are myometrial cysts, fan shaped vascularities or Venetian blind sign, subendometrial halos, right? Diffuse vascularity in a focal lesion, it could be a adenomyoma. The subendometrial thing shows diffuse infiltration. The endometrium is broken at places. So, these are all the signs which we look for in a sonography report or if we study the pathogenesis of adenomyosis clearly. So, you can make out what to see in a sonography report. So, mostly sonography and especially transvaginal sonography gives you the diagnosis in cases of adenomyosis. But still, if there is some problem, we can always go for MRI. MRI is diagnostic, but yes, we are using it less frequently because it is a bit expensive tool. MRI will show the same changes asymmetrical. Asymmetrical means posterior more, anterior less. Asymmetrical thickness of the uterine walls because of the infiltration which goes into the posterior walls more. Heterogeneous myometrial ecotexture. Small myometrial hypoechoic cyst or honeycomb appearance. The things are the same, but the modality is different. So, remember the pathogenesis and you will remember the investigations. Striated projections extending from endometrium to myometrium. Same thing, Venetian blind sign or fan shaped infiltrations. Endometrial eco, which is poorly defined. Uterus is globally enlarged. This globally enlarged thing is very, very important even in your clinical examination because in fibroid it is irregularly enlarged. Where there is fibroid, there is enlargement, other way it is not. But in cases of adenomyosis, it is a globular enlargement. And the JZ or the junctional zone thickening, that is the subendometrial lining of the myometrium, is thickened and it is more than 12 mm now. Right? So, if you remember these changes, just take it in your mind that the subendometrial uh, junctional zone is important, it is hazy, there is heterogeneous ecogenicity, fan shaped line 16, posterior wall is more thickened and there are myometrial cyst. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If you remember them, your adenomyosis is done. Now comes the treatment part. See, in cases of endometriosis, we will be studying it in detail, but endometriosis is more responsive to hormones. But this is endometriosis interna. That means the thing is implanted inside the myometrium itself and sometimes it is functional, sometimes it is basal. So, it is not responding to hormones so well as an endometriosis response. So, generally medical management or hormonal management is a failure in cases of adenomyosis. Now, it all depends on the patient's condition. If the patient is in severe pain or severe menorrhagia, then surgery is the choice. But if the patient has a complaint of mild pain, then NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, right? Like your ibuprofen, these are the drugs of choice. 
which can control the pain and the bleeding. So, if the main thing is dysmenorrhea with slight of heavy bleeding, you can go with NSAIDs and let the time pass and let the patient attain menopause. But if the patient is not relieved on that, then the definitive treatment is definitely, definitely surgical. In cases of adenomyosis, it is very, very difficult to conserve the uterus. There is a very, very little place of hormonal therapy, but yes, LNG IUS or Mirena, what does that mean? Levonorgestrol, which is a type of progesterone. So, there is an intrauterine device which we keep inside the uterus and it releases levonorgestrol on a regular consistent basis. It has given good results in cases of adenomyosis to improve the heavy bleeding and the dysmenorrhea. So, it functions something like that. We insert it inside and keep it there, this Mirena thing and it releases the levonorgestrol which functions on the endometrium. Denizol, which was being earlier used, is now more or less obsolete in cases of adenomyosis. Now, the surgical treatment. Surgical treatment, if the woman is parous, that is the family is complete and the age is like that, that the patient is not likely to conceive in the future, then in that cases, hysterectomy is the treatment of choice and mostly it is a total hysterectomy with bilateral salpingo ophorectomy. It is the treatment of choice and it relieves the patient of all the problems. But if the patient does not want to go for definitive or extirpative surgery, then there is a role of conservative surgery, mainly if the patient wants to conceive again in the future. Adenomyomectomy, number one, what does that mean? If it is a local disease, there is a globular thing which is called as adenomyoma, right? How do you differentiate between adenomyoma and a fibroid uterus or a leomyoma? A leomyoma has a capsule which is well circumscribed world appearance. But in adenomyoma, you will find diffuse heterogeneous ecogenicity and there is no definitive thing. There is no plane of dissection. It is just a local place of adenomyosis, we call it as adenomyoma. So, we just remove all of this and, the, and then repair the myometrium. This is adenomyomectomy. Uterine mass reduction, it generally does not have a value now, it just to complete the topic, uterine mass reduction means you just take out a part of the myometrium and repair the last of the myometrium, but it does not function well. So, nowadays hysterectomy is the treatment of choice, method could be any, abdominal, laparoscopic, whatever the patient wants or the surgeon is convenient. But for conservative surgery, adenomyomectomy, if it is a local adenomyosis, adenomyoma or uterine artery embolization is also working well, which we have already discussed in our leomyoma lectures. So, with this I finish adenomyosis and the take home thing is that whenever a patient presents with heavy bleeding and dysmenorrhea, how do you elicit the history is very, very important and according to the history and clinical examination, you will prescribe investigations which are sonographies and MRI and the treatment hormonal th therapy has no role in adenomyosis and the definitive treatment is surgical. Thank you.